say let him in. Hello, and welcome to the part of the internet where finally I get to talk about the Viz dub versus the Sailor Moon Deke dub. So in 2016, I wrote a blog entry to the SailorTortilla.com website where I decided to talk about most of the major Sailor Senshi. I thought it's been four years since 2016 and maybe you guys didn't read the blog entry. So this video is for you. But recently there was an article that came out, um, really interesting little piece. They quoted what I wrote in the article where I basically trashed Linda Ballantyne and I'd like to revisit that. I'd like to chat about the Deke dub slash Cloverway dub. The blog entry in question was basically saying that the original dub was perfect and Linda Ballantyne was the best and that's a little crazy to me. No shade on Linda Ballantyne. I've seen her at con. She seems like an amazing and wonderful person, but I do not think that she is the favorite, at least for me, for Sailor Moon. I will preface this by saying that the Sailor Moon Deke dub and the Cloverway dub had very serious censorship issues that I do not agree with. This is not an endorsement of the censorship that occurred um, in regards to the LGBT relationships in the show. This dub was definitely not perfect because of that. It is a fan favorite and a lot of it probably has to do with nostalgia. I probably fall into that category. We're starting with Usagi, of course, because I already discussed one of the actresses. I'll start with the first, which was Tracy Moore. <gasps> How dare you give me that! <sighs> the nerve of that guy! What a total jerk calling me a meatball head still! He sure is cute! Tracy Moore was a very young sounding Usagi in the deep dub. She was called Serena, so she was a very young sounding Serena. I think she was the closest in terms of a realistic teenage voice for the character. She voiced Sailor Moon up until episode 22. There were a couple episodes in between where Terry Hawks, the second voice of Usagi, jumped in. Those would be episodes 12 through 14 and 16 through 20. So it was a little bit of a transition there. I remember noticing it as a kid. I wasn't that crazy about Terry Hawks when Tracy Moore was gone. Farewell then. Wait. Tell me, Tuxedo Mask, it can't be true that you don't care for me. I know, because you came to my rescue again. That was just for old time's sake. <gasps> well then tell me, Darian, please, tell me why you don't care for me anymore. Terry Hawks did an excellent job. I think that she gave the character a lot of personality that a lot of the original dub fans remember. You know, when you get used to it, you get used to it. It's like the original dub of uh, Dragon Ball Z or the second dub of Dragon Ball Z. It's been crazy. You know Goku was called Zero at one point? It's silly. I think Terry Hawks took the character and made it her own. The vocal fry and the kind of like low sounding voice sometimes is not vibes for everyone, but you know, when you take a character and you make them feel alive, I think you're doing your job. And I think the acting was there, the acting was on par. When it came to the Viz dub, I know that Naoko Takeuchi herself approved of Stephanie and said that this is what I want, this is what I feel like is going to work. But then again, sometimes a, the Japanese staff does not entirely gel with American colloquialisms or the way that we would determine whether or not acting is good or not. My issue with Stephanie isn't so much that she's a bad actress, she's not a bad actress. The issue is that her voice as Sailor Moon has always been I'm talking up here instead of her natural voice. Um, I skipped Linda Valentine. There must be a reason for that. <laughs> so the Viz dub. Stephanie seems to do very well in other roles, but when it comes to Usagi, and you're doing this for an entire episode, you can hear the uh, underneath. Hi, I'm 14 years old. No, you're not. You're definitely not 14 years old. Maybe it's easier for Stephanie than it is for me. I was hoping I'd get used to it. I was hoping that it would improve. The issue is the portrayal of the character does not feel natural. And this is not a critique just on Sailor Moon. Most modern anime in America has this issue where we'll have the same team of voice actors, talented as they are, putting on this fake like, I'm a kawaii girl. I'm a tsundere character. Modern dubs are not my favorite. The best version of watching 
Sailor Moon is probably in Japanese. <laughs> Forget all the dubs. She's the moon princess tonight. <laughs> Valentine showed up in the show when it was brought back to Cartoon Network. They finally dubbed the third and fourth season. I had already seen the seasons on VHS. I already knew what the Japanese voice sounded like. I knew the American stuff was different. But I didn't know that Terry Hawks wasn't coming back. So when I saw that there was a new cast, Sagi didn't sound like a teenager, did not sound like a human being on Earth. I thought it was a joke. So when that article came out this week and it said Linda Valentine was the best, I was incensed. I felt a deep rage inside of my stomach. And I said, no. And something was wrong with Amy. A lot of the things that they were doing in the Cloverway dub, they were like one day filming a bunch of episodes. Sometimes they'd use the first take and move on. I don't think the cast had a lot of room to do a lot of good work. I think they were set up to fail. Amy, where are you at? What did I say about you in 2016? Not much. Oh, really? You look sad. You okay? Mm. First one put on an affected Frasier-like accent, if you've ever seen the show Frasier. Oh, Serena, I don't know what's going on. And it's like this high class, I have education kind of voice. Still not my favorite, but at least I could tell her apart from the other characters. She was later replaced with the Cloverway dub, seasons three and four. I'm you, Amy. Remember how you felt when you first listened to Mr. Nishino's music? Remember your dream? I just need the courage to find my inner strength and power to save my friends. And nope. Big nope. I'm sorry. It says here in my blog that I recall almost nothing about her portrayal in season three and four. Uh, still true. Seems like you've forgotten about the people who will be very sad if you die. And poor Kate Higgins. Sometimes I can't tell her voice apart from the others. Um, that's a big problem with Sailor Mars and Luna. For one, my sixth sense and prophecies used to be spot on, but not anymore. Could this girl be the princess that we've been looking for, huh? Don't make wild accusations! Christina V, who's like so famous. She's, she was Homura and Madoka. I love that show so much. I feel like she's typecast, or maybe she's just good at doing those characters, but she kind of always does the same. Mars like characters. So in the deep dub, we got Katie Griffin. No, it just so happens I took a change of clothes this morning. My uniform's in yes, the bag. And I'm a purple cockatoo. Emily Barlow. Then maybe we can give her a little birthday party. Sailor Mars. Huh? All of the rays are good. All of them. But then Katie Griffin and Emily Barlow like switch places in the deep dub. Especially in the last half of R those 17 or 13 episodes that all got released on one day that actually completed season two. Yeah, I'm still salty about it. Imagine not finishing a season for years and then on a Saturday they're like, We're stacking up some Sailor Moons. One, two, three, Time to go to work. 17 lost episodes in one big hit. Oh, wait, cool. Sunday, May 23rd. You know I love that shit. And I remember nothing about the end of uh, Sailor Moon R. I just remember the, the final battle with, you know, the power of love, which I know all the lyrics to, apparently. I've been singing it in the house way too much. I don't even think that it's that good. Um, I think there's better songs in the dub. Speaking of songs in the dub, songs in the dub. <laughs> bunch of character songs that would just appear in random episodes and it was amazing one of which is rainy day man for makoto in season two when she has to give a blood transfusion to a guy and there's a puddle of blood in the episode a puddle of blood made it onto american tv and sailor moon but zoisite had to be a woman because gay people are scary that's insane when it comes to luna british i guess we're talking about luna now british lady luna is not vibes She's got a crescent moon on her forehead, and she can speak. She's got to be your daughter. 
You could have at least told me! It's fun to make fun of. I think the elder person mentor type of character would have worked really well in Sailor Moon. That would have been an improvement to the original show, but it certainly wasn't how it was originally. Luna is trying to figure her shit out just like everybody else. The, the worst part about Luna in the original dub is the Sailor Moon S movie. In the Sailor Moon S movie, she gets a human transformation. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. 10 out of 10. Amazing. But she's got that damn old lady voice. The whole movie, she's in love with Kakarou, who's an idiot, by the way. <sighs> that whole movie is a mess. And I'll be talking about it in another video. And that lady gave a really good performance. Don't get me wrong. It's just, it was a terrible, terrible choice to do. And I don't agree with it. When it comes to the this dub. No, I'm okay. Ray, take out the transformation pen. Hold on, did that cat just speak to me? I'll explain it all later, just trust me. Hurry up and take out the pen that you picked up earlier. <sighs> if Luna and Mars didn't sound so similar, I would be so happy. I love that she's young. I love the voice that they chose for her. She just sounds just like Christina V. Michelle Ruff, you're doing your best. So you wanna pick on somebody, you furball? How about picking on somebody your own size, huh? <gasps> all right, so we got Susan Roman who was in the Deke and the Cloverway dub as Makoto. I loved her in the Deke dub, and something happened in the Cloverway dub. Again, this is why this is why I suspect an issue may have been directing. You got the same voice actress and something doesn't sound right. It's the script, it's probably the directing. It doesn't work. Cloverway is the worst dub. So if you're watching season three and four, just swap to the Viz dub. Their scenes with the Witches 5, by the way, sounds so wrong, it sounds like hentai sometimes. What now? You know what? Clean up this big mess, of course. Now, if I don't do this in 30 minutes, I'll be late for school. So, let's go. And now we got Amanda Miller. She's doing her best. Just don't like it. And she seems like a very nice person, side note. Some, some of these things are completely subjective, and you don't have to agree with me. It is just my opinion. I'm Sailor Venus, and if you're looking to make any trouble, here it comes right back at you. I loved original Minako. She had kind of like that valley girl thing going on, but you know what? She showed up with Artemis, who sounded like, like a pothead. That's right, Sailor Scout. Like, hey, cool cats. And then Minako's all like valley girl-ish. It totally worked. That's it, that's where I'll leave it at. And then the next chick, Emily Barlow. <laughs> what kind of planet will our children inherit if we forget simple decency? Besides, your brain could short circuit if you study too much. Right, Andrew? Yeah, I didn't. Who was Sailor Mars came for the Cloverway dub. See, this is why I'm confused. <laughs> she temporarily was Sailor Mars for a little bit, and then she was Sailor Venus, and I, I just hear two different Sailor Marses that I'm familiar with when I watch Cloverway dub. The All right, thank you very much. And in the Viz dub, I think Jeremy Lay, she's wonderful and I love her and I think she's doing a fucking brilliant job, honestly. Um, no complaints there. See, like with the Viz dub, the things that are wrong aren't 100% wrong. They're just off, especially for somebody who watched the original dub. I think everybody who was Sailor Venus did a good job just when it was Cloverway. I thought she was Sailor Mars, it's weird. Let's talk about Artemis. Artemis surfer dude. Pretty sight, huh? I can't tell you how happy we are to finally be joined up with you guys. I loved it. Him and Minako showing up at the same time with these weird accents completely worked out. It was the best thing ever. And uh, that was Ron Rubin. Ron Rubin, bless you, sir. I wish you would have come back. Even though, like, Johnny Young Bosch is killing it. He really makes you feel like you're watching the Japanese version and, like, dude, I fucking love Power Rangers. I'm not gonna talk shit about Johnny Young Bosch. You decided to forget those sad memories by devoting yourself to fighting evil. I wish the cats had more to do in Crystal, though. And then we have Chibi Usa. Oh boy, Chibi Usa! Ah, all right. Why are you always so mean to me? Can you help me up? Please, Daddy? You can get up yourself. <gasps> She is extremely annoying in the Deke dub. This is not the actress's fault. 
she's really good at acting like a spoiled brat, but it comes across as too real and you don't want to deal with it. Ah, Darian, you're my hero. Please teach me how to do a vaulting horse. Remember how to do it? Please show me. No way, Shrimp. Darian, please say you'll teach me how to jump. Stephanie Beard. Stephanie Beard, I know a lot of people didn't like Chibiusa in the Cloverway dub, but quite frankly, you, you know that's that's what that actress sounds like, right? It's the most natural voice to that woman ever. I like her. I like Chibiusa there. The dialogue they had her say was absolutely insane. There's that episode where she rides Pegasus and Watashi Dachi ni Nani Garute or whatever it's called plays in the background. And they dubbed it, by the way, they dubbed it in the Global Bay dub and it is... Oh, it is bad. Um, there's a lot of clips in it where it sounds like maybe the horse and Chibiusa are doing something that is not safe for work. I don't want that Pegasus. It can't be. I was being selfish. I didn't know. There's dialogue where in the original Japanese there was not dialogue during the song, you know, they're like riding in the clouds. And in Japanese, it was just silent. You're just watching a really pretty scene of a girl riding a, a fucking Pegasus. Sailor Moon is batshit crazy. When I am with you. Like weird shit, I hate it. All the songs in the Glowaway dub can just, just go away. Is this it? Oh, Burrito just left. I was doing this for you. It's just not vibes. It's really freaky. It freaks me out. It makes, it makes my ears itchy. I don't like it. Shibusa, I like Stephanie Beard. I think Stephanie Beard did a good job. I think Tracy Hoyt did a good job. I, I just think the character came across as super annoying. That's the dictum. And then we have Sandy Fox. Now then, time to start looking for the silver crystal. <laughs> Sandy Fox is also doing an excellent job. I have no problem with any of the TV stuff. Even though you're annoyed with her in season two, you know what? That means she's a great actress. That means she's really convincing you that she views up really annoying. It takes acting, it takes skill. And then we have Mamoru. Mamoru! We got a couple voice actors for you. We got four, is that four? Hmm. I don't remember the first guy. A 30? Admirable! Go! Are you stupid or just incredibly lazy? He dipped after episode 11. Toby Proctor. Toby Proctor was in pivotal episodes such as the one where uh, Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask find out that they are each other. Serena Sailor Moon! Sailor Moon, I've got to earn those crystals. He was kind of goofy. A lot of things in the Deke Dub are goofy. I thought he did a good job and I have no complaints. <laughs> Sorry. Of course, it's the anniversary of our first date. <laughs> and then Vincent Carassa took over later on, even though he was Alan in Sailor Moon R. So Tuxedo Mask was voiced by a villain for a while and I'm fine with it. Everybody was fine, except maybe Reno, because we don't remember Reno. 30%? <laughs> Looks to me like you better study harder next time, Bunhead. Vizdub. Vizdub, we have Robbie Damon is the best part of the Vizdub. He completely encapsulates who is Mamoru, how his attitude is, how he was portrayed in the Japanese. I think that man can do no wrong as far as the Vizdub is concerned. I would watch the Vizdub just for his portrayal of Mamoru. And I've tried watching the Viz Dub, man. I've tried watching it a lot, especially to watch Sailor Moon Supers. <sighs> that season, it's so hard to get through. At least watching a new dub makes it slightly interesting to me because I can see new things and make an opinion. And my opinion is, even with an accurate dub, that season is rapey and weird, especially the first half. I'm sorry, season four fans. Setsuna, three voice actors. And apparently I had an opinion in 2016. I don't have an opinion now. Everybody's good, no opinion. If you go to sailortortilla.com, it looks like I have an opinion. I don't, I think they're fine. You know, when it comes to the whole thing about this dub versus that dub versus that dub, I don't care, it exists. Other shows, like really great shows, one of my favorite anime 
Fushigi Yugi. Fushigi Yugi only has the Japanese dub and an old English dub. You know, old dubs weren't held to a high standard. Anime was not mainstream like it is now. Whatever you got, you have to live with. With Sailor Moon, at least we have an option to watch something else. Hey, I played the song, but you weren't here. It sounded weird. Fushigi Yugi only has one English dub. We can't choose between voice actors. We, we just got what we got. And with Sailor Moon, we've got so much to talk about. It's insane. I don't know if that's... I'm trying to make the point that it's good, but it might also be a detriment because us English-speaking Sailor Moon fans are always arguing about the same thing. I don't really argue about it. You know why? Because I don't care. I can watch any dub I want whenever I want because of the internet. In my opinion, should not change yours. I actually would love to hear what you guys have to say and what you think. And why, tell me why I'm wrong, you know? Like, convince me that Stephanie Shett is doing an excellent job. I want to see people be big fans of, you know, Christina V, all these people in the biz dub that, that I'm just... And, and even Linda Valentine. I still don't think she's the best Usagi, though. Argue with me. I literally read everybody's comment. I say this all the time, and it's true. But I know why you're here. You want to hear me talk about Molly? You want to talk about that little Brooklyn, Jersey, whatever girl in the Deke dub that makes the Deke dub so unique? Molly, Serena. Where'd you really get these, Melvin? Ms. H wasn't carrying a purse. Ah! I think all of the charm of the original Sailor Moon dub in English comes from the portrayal of Naru as Molly. There is an excuse that I've read on the internet many times about why they decided to give her an accent at all. It wasn't random. So in the original Japanese, she has an accent, apparently, from Osaka. You know, they speak differently in different portions of Japan. She had an Osaka accent, and her last name is Osaka. It's just all kitschy. It's cute. Whatever. And then in English, they were like, well, I guess she's going to have to have some kind of a, a Jersey, Boston, Brooklyn... You want to play video games, Serena? I don't know what's going on, but it's charming and I love it and I will watch the dub just for Molly. There are things you cannot get away from and one of them is Molly's accent. If you read a meme, I'm pretty sure you hear it in her accent. That doesn't happen with every dub. Can you tell I'm mad that Fushigi Yugi doesn't have another dub? Because I think with a really good dub, people would totally get into it. So I'm telling you, there, if you haven't seen Fushigi Yugi, it's streaming. Somewhere. I saw it. Launch for zero dollars with Amazon Prime. Sailor Moon got a new dub. We should be happy, but instead we're arguing. Because I don't think any of the dubs are 100% perfect. Hey, what is up? It is me in the editing room. It has taken literally two months to edit this video. So, uh, if you want a part two, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of footage left over. So, let me know if you want more like this. I'm sorry. I work Monday through Friday, <laughs> which is good. I have a job during Corona. Aha. Not everyone can say that. Things are bad. Watch more Sailor Moon. Also watch Fushigi Yuki. I'm pretty sure you guys are just watching to just have a conversation and hear what somebody else has to think because I'm going to read a lot of comments and it's going to be great. And we're going to talk about it. It's going to be fun. So thanks for watching. I am Sailor Tortilla. I talk about Sailor Moon stuff and uh, I need to watch new anime. So. Go ahead and recommend to me some new stuff and maybe maybe we can maybe we can talk about those things. Bye bye. Dick dub is bad because they erased the gaze.